Welcome back, everybody. With the return of the Final Fantasy XV crossover event this week, and the four-man car costing 200,000 in MGP, I figured it would be a great time to give tips on how to quickly receive all the MGP you'll need for the event. I'm going to show you my tips to complete the challenge log, show some tricks to make some of the more challenging tasks much easier. I'll also give you my strategy for the gates to help you complete them, even if it's your first attempt. It will take about two hours to complete all the weekly challenges. This will give you more than enough MGP to complete the 15 crossover. The first thing you'll need is a Gold Saucer VIP card, which you can get from doing the level 45 or 50 squadron missions for your grand company. This will give you a 15% MGP buff that lasts for two hours. If you don't have squadron missions unlocked, you can also use the FC buff for 10% MGP. Sadly, that doesn't stack or just do a few extra gates to get the MGP you'll need. Now that we have our buff, we need to prepare our fashion report. The fashion report is a weekly contest that lasts from Friday through Monday. If you get a score of 80 out of 100 or better, you'll receive 60,000 MGP. Luckily, an awesome person named Kyoko Star posts the cheat code on Reddit every week. I'll leave a link in the description. Right before we get judged, we want to use the VIP card. Now we'll hope we don't screw up, And bam, 80 out of 100. Already 69,000 MGP done. Nice. Now we'll begin working on the challenge logs. Every 20 minutes, we'll stop working on the log and do whatever gate is open. So we'll start with the mini cack pot. It's like three scratch off tickets a day. No matter what, you'll always make MGP with the potential of hitting big and getting 10,000. People tend to have two strats. The first is finding a one, two, or three and trying to unlock if the 10K is available. The other strat is making a Y on the card, like how this one is in the corner. Our remaining picks will draw an Y to see as many combinations as possible. There's also a website people use. They enter their numbers and the site gives them the best possible line. I'll leave a link in the description. Now I want to unlock the triple triad tournament. Every other week, there's a triple triad tournament. We talk to the tournament voucher at the entrance to the triple triad area. If it's the off week, then just queue to join the battle hall like normal. Now we'll be clearing out all the weekly triple triad challenges. You have two options. Try to be a top scorer for the tournament or just go and trounce green hands 20 times. Easy wins. If it's not a tourney week, I'll just trounce green hands. If you need help making a winning deck, click here where I go over how to make an easy winning deck. Bring out all your matches, but be sure to watch the time and not missing any gates. If a gate pops, you can always leave the hall and come back later. Once I finish my triple triad challenges, I'll check if a draft is currently underway and queue for the draft. It doesn't matter if we win or lose, we just need to finish one draft for an easy 5,000 MGP. Now we're done with triple triad for the week. Woohoo! Time to head to the minion area for some pet battles. A lot of people seem to skip these logs, saying it's too challenging and they don't have the minions to win. I'll show you an easy winning strategy that requires only two minions. You can even do it with just one. It would just take a few extra seconds. Those minions are Kitagora and the Wind Up Gentleman. Kitagora usually goes for less than 200 gil on the market board, or you can use your botanist to pick one from a rare node in each shroud from 9 p.m. to midnight game time. The second minion, Wind Up Gentleman, is rewarded for finishing the Realm Reborn Hildebrand storyline, which most people have finished to unlock the Endwalker relics. So if you haven't finished out around, don't worry. You can always just use Kitagora and win every time. Don't forget to set them on your Verminion hotbar. In order to do this, click Character, Gold Saucer, and Verminion. And then on the top is a yellow button that says Edit Hotbar. Place these two minions on the bar, and now you're ready to make an easy 27,000 MGP. Click on Lord Verminion. If this is your first time, click on the Verminion Challenge and complete the tutorial. Otherwise, under Challenge, choose Step 2, Hatching a Plan. We'll be doing this five times to complete the challenge log. That's it. If you notice, I haven't even bothered unlocking any of the other challenges on this character. We will set four Kittergorns in B to start. Once the battle begins, have them attack the middle pillar. Queue up four more Kittergorns for A. As they spawn, send them one at a time to attack the left pillar. Now queue up six Kitagoras and a gentleman on C. If you don't have a gentleman, just send more Kitagoras to C. 
Send them all to attack the right pillar. You're sending more to attack this pillar because it's the last one you are queuing towards and you want all three pillars to be destroyed close to the same time. Queue up three more Kitagors in B and just send them out as needed. Once the tower is completely destroyed, just send those minions to whichever pillar needs the most help. All three pillars should be destroyed roughly at the same time. It shouldn't take more than two minutes to complete. And just like that, you made 5,000 MGP. Complete this four more times for a total of 27,000 MGP. Real easy. You will now want to complete some mini games until you win 100 MGP and at least three games. I tend to pick the Crystal Tower Striker because I find it fairly easy. Now, let's head to the Domen Mahjong area to, uh, um, er, well, moving on, let's go do some Chocobo races instead. For races, I'll usually complete three races, and if I get a win in that time, awesome. Otherwise, I'll settle for just the 5,000 for completing the three races and hope for the 5,000 for winning once. But you can make another 16,000 for completing 20 races and winning 10 times, but I tend to not find it very time efficient. But if you enjoy Chocobo Racing, then definitely finish these logs as well. By now, we should have also finished the Gate Challenge logs, which leaves us just one more weekly event, the Weekly Jumbo Cactus, where you have the chance of getting participation reward more often than not. The numbers are read in Japanese fashion, meaning from right to left instead of the Western tradition of left to right. Every Saturday, there's an event that occurs at 6 p.m. where you get to watch them draw the numbers. Once the numbers are drawn, you will also receive a 10% MGP boost for one hour on the CACBOT winnings. This also sadly does not stack with the VIP cards. That is all the weekly challenges. I'll now give you some advice I've learned while farming a MGP for the gates. Let's start with everyone's favorite, Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith is an ADHD nightmare. It is very difficult for me to focus on just myself when so much is going on around me. This is why I've learned from some strats to combat this the best way I can. My first strat is to queue immediately as soon as it pops. If you are fast enough, the game will actually put you into your own instance and you won't be distracted by everyone else. Here's an example of the same leap with and without people. See how much more peaceful and easy it is when 200 people aren't jumping all over the place? Another strat that I use that if I get in with a bunch of people is I will turn off all my UI and click on myself so that I'm targeted so that I can see where I'm actually located so I can easier find myself in the crowd. Another strat, another strat for the newest leap, when you're jumping up the side of the tree from the narrow platform to narrow platform, always face towards the tree. This way, if you mess up and fall, you will stay on the tree and not fall to oblivion and have to start the whole thing all from the beginning. All right, let's now talk about slices right. I've already made a video explaining most of what I do for Slice. Click the link for more information. I also made a short for any way the wind blows. You just want to move to the southern side of the platform and stand inside the curly queue off the crack bar. This allows you to be safe from all but two of the visit attacks, giving you the highest chance for success. Cliffhanger is the easiest gate and easily beaten. If you're having trouble, just take your time and play safe by overwaiting for bombs. It's not a race, and just ignore everyone else if they are zerging by you. The final gate is Air Force One. This is also a very simple gate. In the second half of the event, you'll be needing to avoid hitting the red notes. They tend to pop at inopportune times to trick you into accidentally hitting them. I tend to hit the outside nodes until they appear since they tend to spawn mostly in the middle. Though after a few runs, you'll start getting the patterns down since the event only has a few set rotations. So with finishing the weekly logs, you should have enough MGP to buy everything from the event. If not, you should only be a couple gates away. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing in order to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.